everyone. Welcome to the MLG product criteria video for a rubric slash proficiency scale. You might hear me um, interchange rubric and proficiency scale, but we're referring to that same one product. This tool is used to clarify proficiency criteria to students and their families. And you'll see on your screen that here is a sample template of what a rubric or a proficiency scale might look like. It's generally composed of four separate levels and you'll see proficiency levels either across the top or to the side of that level descriptor criteria. And if there are multiple criteria within a descriptor, we tend to see them listed. If you'd like, you can always access a template for a proficiency scale by going to the bit.ly on your screen. A proficient rubric is going to reference a single learning target. It's going to employ student-friendly language as well as content-specific academic vocabulary. It's going to contain level descriptors of each proficiency level that can be assessed and are also actionable. It will include criteria that is formatted in a list and the level descriptors are going to correlate to or will be developed by referencing depth of knowledge, levels of rigor, and skill level. We're now going to take a look at some teacher created uh, rubrics and please feel free to pause the video at any point in time if you'd like to get an in-depth look at the exemplar on your screen. Let's look at an example that references a single learning target. You'll notice that in this exemplar, the teacher has written the learning target right at the top of the rubric. It's easily identifiable. It's very clear. And the teacher has also included the connection to the state standards and the grade level. You'll also notice in this separate example that the teacher, again, is making the learning target uh, very clear. And it also includes that common core state standard connection. employ student-friendly language and content-specific academic vocabulary. Let's take a look at some samples. In this example, you'll notice that this is a first grade teacher who has created a rubric for geometry, and they are employing language that is grade level appropriate as well as content specific. They even included student language that they might look for when determining what proficiency level the student is at. In this next example, this is a secondary math teacher who has created a rubric for their algebra class and they have also employed uh, appropriate academic language that is content specific. Contains level descriptors of each proficiency level that can be assessed and are actionable. You'll notice that the sample that we're showing you here is a four leveled rubric and this goes from exceeds to minimal progress. But when we look closer at the descriptors, what we like is that the teacher is being very specific in what they're looking for in order for a student to meet the corresponding proficiency level. So for example, in order for the student to be at a three, they need to be able to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. They need to add or subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators. These criteria um, in these descriptors, they can be evaluated, measured, as well as identified. The descriptors are not open for interpretation. They're not unclear. Now let's take a look at a rubric that is not yet proficient based on the criteria number three. So you'll notice that here you also have a proficiency scale that goes from one to four. 
And if you'd like to engage in this brief activity, you could always pause the video when ready to try to identify why these descriptors do not meet the criteria. The descriptors don't meet the criteria because they're ambiguous. They're open for interpretation. They're unclear to a student. So for example, what is the difference between making little progress and making some progress? What is the difference between some errors and few errors? Formats criteria for a proficiency level in a list. In order to meet this uh, expectation, a teacher is going to have to think through stylistic and practical choices that are going to be based on how the teacher envisions their students making use of this tool. So we have a teacher who has used bullets and a teacher who has used checkboxes. In this example, the teacher has used rows and checkboxes. Level descriptors correlate to or are developed by referencing depth of knowledge, levels of rigor, and skill level. Here is an example where the teacher has provided descriptors in which the vocabulary or the verbs change as we increase the proficiency levels. So for example, at level one beginning, a student is expected to be able to identify and understand. And as we move up those proficiency levels, a student should be able to explain, calculate, and solve. In this example, from lower levels to higher levels, the student is making different amounts of errors. So if you look closely at the beginning level, the student is making up to four errors. And as we move into proficient, the number of errors has decreased to maybe one or two. Now let's look at the masterful criteria. A mastery level rubric is going to meet all of the proficient criteria we just reviewed and will include at least one of the following. Provide students with examples of what proficiency looks like. Offer specific instructions or clarify how students can advance to the next proficiency level. And suggest additional resources to make expectations clear or to support the student's continued learning. We're going to look at some examples of how some teachers have provided students with examples of what proficiency might look like. In this rubric, you'll notice that underneath each of the level descriptors, the teacher has provided an example problem and then also provided the student with sample student work that reflects that level of proficiency. In this separate rubric, the teacher created their proficiency scale on one page and provided a follow-up page that has um, images that are related to each of their level descriptors. In this example, the teacher has provided the learning target, the rubric, and also provided a sample task with a proficient student response. Offer specific instructions or clarifies how students can advance to the next proficiency level. You'll notice that in this rubric, right underneath the descriptors, the teacher has highlighted next steps, and these next steps have been provided to the student in the form of reflective questions. In a separate example that we're seeing now, the teacher has provided the student with the learning target and the rubric, as well as next steps or teacher recommendations that are appropriate or specific for each of the proficiency levels. 
suggest additional resources to make expectations clear or to support continued learning for each proficiency level. This is a portion of a teacher's rubric where they have provided additional resources that they have uh, made available to the students to level up. So they have options where a student can listen to vocabulary, listen to dialogue, and there are videos they can watch. In this example, the teacher has provided some additional videos that are appropriate for each proficiency level on their rubric. And in this example, you'll notice that the teacher has also provided resources that are appropriate for that level. And so you'll see that some of these are links to some websites or some videos. Thanks for watching and feel free to go back into the video to spend more time on any of the examples that you might need.